Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and let's talk about some of the arcs I'm going to be reading in 2022. A couple of years ago, before what happened happened, I was actually trying to get my shit together and making sure that I had a running list of the arcs that I had so that I could read them before the publication date and all of those things, all that all those things that we really strive to do and then you know the world just kind of fell apart a little bit and that was one of the things that fell by the wayside. So unfortunately there's obviously a bunch of books that I still need to go back and read. However I do have arcs for 2022 and I want to make sure to read these before they publish. So this video serves to show you some of the books that I'm very anticipated for and to keep me accountable so I actually read these before the pub date. I have books on this list that are coming out anywhere between January and August so let's just get at it. It. The first on this list is The Kindred by Alicia Dow. I really enjoyed The Sound of Stars by this author, so when I saw she had a new book coming out, I got very excited. To save the galactic kingdom from revolution, kindred mind pairings were created to ensure each and every person would be seen and heard, no matter how rich or poor. Just as a side note, if you've been here before, you probably know that I don't really like to read synopses ahead of time. Sometimes I do read them and I do dramatic readings for you specifically because I don't want to read them. I don't think I'm going to read all of the synopses of all of these. I think I'm just going to give you the kind of the teaser lines for all of them just because that's a better reading experience for me. But you can obviously go look these up as well if they sound interesting in that one teaser line. My kind of thoughts on this is it's going to be like a star-crossed lovers type of situation or possibly even these are just going to be friends. We might have some platonic friend relationship if I know anything about Alicia Dow, which I know a little bit, I don't know a lot, so I might be wrong. I forgot to mention that book is publishing on January 4th. Another book that's publishing on January 4th is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. The one-liner description for this one is, From Rachel Hawkins, the New York Times bestseller of The Wife Upstairs, comes Reckless Girls, a deliciously wicked gothic suspense set on an isolated Pacific island with a dark history for fans of Lucy Foley and Ruth Ware. I haven't read any of these things before, but I like the ideas presented in the middle of that sentence. Next, publishing on January 11th, we have Bad Luck Bridesmaid by Alison Rose Greenberg. Happily Ever After on her own terms. It's official, Zoe Marks is the cursed bridesmaid that no engagement can survive. 10 years, three empire waist dresses, and zero brides have walked down the aisle. When it all comes down to it, I'm sure those couples had problems, but you happen to be there for all of them, so sure, take the blame. Publishing on January 25th, we have Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. An American documentarian travels a haunted highway across the frozen tundra of Siberia in New York Times bestselling author Christopher Golden's Road of Bones, a tightly wound, atmospheric, and creepy as hell supernatural thrill. Considering I'm currently sitting in a winter wonderland with just enough snow that we don't really want to go anywhere, I'm into it. Moving on to February 22nd, first we have Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin. The last man meets the girl with all the gifts in Gretchen Felker Martin's Manhunt, an explosive post-apocalyptic novel that follows trans women and men on a grotesque journey of survival. That's all I need to know. That's it. Also on February 22nd, we have Last Exit by Max Gladstone. American Gods meets the Dark Tower in Last Exit, a dark contemporary fantasy of the open road alternative fantasies and self-discovery from the Locus Award nominated and Hugo and Nebula Award winning author Max Gladstone. That blurb only makes me excited if we're talking about the Dark Tower the books, not the Dark Tower the terrible movie that shouldn't have happened. I will link to the video I did on that when it came out. And that's not me just being like the book was better, I have a Dark Tower tattoo, that movie was not the Dark Tower. On March 1st, we have Edgewood by Kristen Cicerelli. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I know a thing or two about surnames being mispronounced because I sometimes introduce myself as Kathy Trithart. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ooh, Joan He from The Ones We're Meant to Find blurb this one, so I'm going to read that. Edgewood has everything I love in a Kristen Cicerelli book. Lyrical prose, a romance that will hurt, and themes rooted in raw and intimate questions, making for a timeless tale. On March 8th, which is International Women's Day and my little brother's birthday, we have Killing Time by Brina Ehrlich. Summer in Fairy, Connecticut is always meant to be long, lazy days at the beach and wild night parties in the abandoned mansions on the edge of town. Until now. 
that is. Except for the supposed breaking and entering, that actually sounds pretty lovely. On April 5th, about a week before my birthday, we have Reputation by Lex Croucher. Bridgerton meets Gossip Girl with a dash of Jane Austen in Reputation, a Regency-era historical romantic comedy with a deliciously feminist twist from the hilarious new British voice Lex Croucher. I'm aware of Lex because she is friends with Rosiano House Rojas, who I really love and has a YouTube channel and many other projects that she works on, so I'm looking forward to this. Next, being published on May 3rd is I Kissed Cheryl Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Of course I was going to be excited for this. I love Casey's other works. And so far I've always read these books as arcs before they've published. From the New York Times bestselling author of One Last Stop and Red, White, and Royal Blue comes a debut YA romantic comedy about chasing down what you want only to find what you need. Honestly, I don't need to know anything about what this book is going to be. I'm going to go into it and I'm probably going to love it. There's something about Casey's works that I know sometimes doesn't work for other people and sometimes there's plot holes or whatever, but because it just gives me such warm, fuzzy, queer feels, I'm just always super into the books. From a brief scan of some of the words in the synopsis, I get the vibes of our main character is like a high achiever, has a direct path that she's headed on, and then like a month before graduation she kisses Shara, and uh, that changes some things. Next, also publishing on May 3rd, we have Book of Night by Holly Black. I didn't know she was coming out with another book until I got an email from NetGalley being like, hey, this is a book that's coming out, and I'm like, hey, that's a popular author, I'll probably have to read that. Apparently it's also one of Publisher Weekly's top 10 most anticipated books of the year, so yeah, that's pretty much why I'm reading it. I know that a lot of people are going to. And although that isn't a true indication of things I'm going to read in a year, I have liked her work in the past, so I figured I might as well pick up whatever this is. How many times am I going to say New York Times bestselling author in this video? Somebody count it for me, because it's a lot. Number one, New York Times bestselling author Holly Black makes her stunning adult debut with Book of Night, a modern dark fantasy of shadowy thieves and secret societies in the vein of Ninth House and the Night Circus. Okay, yeah, this is definitely something I would be interested in even if I didn't just pick it up because I saw the name and was like, yes, I have read her stuff, let me read more. Next, on May 10th, we have The Woman in the Library by Soleri Gentil. I actually already talked about this one in the spooky books I wanted to read during October. I packed that list with way too many books for the month, but it was a book that I knew that I had an arc of and I knew that I want to read it, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. This one has to do with a group of people in the Boston Public Library, which is why I picked it up because I've been to that library and it's really cool. And then all of a sudden there's a terrified scream of some woman and they're all just kind of trapped in the reading room and these strangers are sitting at a table chatting to each other and we've got to figure out if one of them maybe did something to somebody. It's one of those types of books and I'm looking forward to it. Next, also publishing on May 10th, we have Help, I'm Alive by Jorinder Basran. A powerfully emotional story about four people touched by a teen's death, award-winning author Jorinder Basran's Help, I'm Alive is a clear-eyed exploration of the meaning of connection in the modern era. Ooh, this one is quite literally going to hit a little close to home, the first line of the synopsis tells me, because it says, After video footage of Jay's death is shared on social media, a suburban Vancouver community is left to try to make sense of what happened to Jay and whether his death was an accident or a suicide. Vancouver is very close to me. I live on Vancouver Island, which no, is not in Vancouver. It's right next to Vancouver. It's that big-ass island right next to Vancouver. But yeah, it's so close that this is almost local. Next, publishing on May 24th, is Brace for Impact by Gabe Mon to Santi. Look, this is a roller derby memoir. I used to play roller derby. I know it was only for a summer, but I did. So I'm automatically predisposed to enjoy this, assuming it's written well and all of those things, but let me give you the one-liner. A powerful and redemptive story of how the dazzling world of roller derby helped one young woman transform her fear and self-doubt into gutsy, big-hearted, adventurous living. Next on May 31st, we have The Favor by Nora Murphy. A gripping debut domestic suspense novel, Nora Murphy's thrilling They Favor explores with compassion and depth what can happen when women push to the limit take matters into their own hands. Staying is dangerous, leaving could be worse. Ooh, here's one I just got the other day and I'm so excited about it. Publishing on June 7th, we have Home Field Advantage by Dahlia Adler. This, to my understanding, is a sapphic romance between a high school quarterback, who is in fact a woman, and a cheerleader. 
just reading the first paragraph of the synopsis, what happens is this cheerleader is very excited to make cheer lead until the quarterback dies. And then the whole school is just kind of bummed out about the quarterback being replaced by this guy that is coming in who is new to the school, but it turns out that Jack is short for Jacqueline, and all hell breaks loose. Publishing on July 12th, we have Wake the Bones by Elizabeth Kilcoyne. The sleepy little farm that Laurel Early grew up on has awakened. The woods are shifting. The soil is dead under her hands, and her bone pile just stood up and walked away. That sounds suitably creepy. I'm gonna like it, I'm sure. Publishing on July 26, we have Long Story Short by Serena Kaler. This is a debut YA rom-com about a homeschooled math genius who finds herself in her element at theater camp, where she learns about friendship, love, and how to be herself. I definitely picked this up because of theater camp vibes. I was a total theater kid. I love theater. I want it. Last but not least, and obviously not the only other arc I'm going to read this year, publishing on August 9th, we have The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. This is a contemporary fantasy debut novel. It's a story of motherhood, sacrifice, and hope, of queer identity and learning to accept who you are, of gilded lies and the danger of believing the narratives others create for you. And obviously it looks bibliophilic as hell, so I am predisposed to enjoy this as well. There you have it, those are the arcs I currently have in my possession for 2022, and I'm sure there will be more that come out throughout the year. Are you excited for any of these books? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that is down below, as well as the link to my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist if you would like to buy me a book. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!